Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker, Bonnie Bay Crochet, and you have come to the final video, video number six of Bonnie's Mystery Crochet Along. I have my project all put together and ready to show you. Let me go ahead and show you a picture of it right here. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Now that I've completed all 20 squares, I'm trying to decide how I want them to be crocheted together. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, now that I have completed all 20 squares, I have laid them out in an arrangement on one of the beds here so that I can evaluate how I want them to go together. Now, this is the way I am putting my colors together. And notice how I tried to alternate um, the squares, one going vertically, one going horizontally, back and forth. I think that really does add a lot to this, and it's going to really help as the squares go together. Um, I highly recommend, once you dis discover the order that you want your blanket to be in, photograph it with your phone or something so that you have a record of it, because I promise you, as you're putting each of these um, rows and columns together you're not going to remember I oftentimes get confused so what I'm going to do at this point is I am going to crochet these in in columns of five like um, one two three four five and then another column and then another column and then another column and then again I still have the picture on my phone as a reference so once I crochet these together. I'm going to show you how to do this just a second. So I'm going to crochet these in columns like this, one column, two columns, etc. And then I'm going to have a long seam. I'm going to show you how to crochet the columns together. And then after that, we're going to crochet all the way around. But this is probably the most important part. Do take time to discover how you want your colors and the patterns to be coordinated. One thing that I like to do, as you can see, I try to put um, a color that is more a red-based color, or uh, I guess you'd call the warm colors next to the cool colors. That's that's not a rule that you have to follow, but that's just something that is often pleasing to the eye. This is not done perfectly in that, but I do try to stick to that as much as possible. Now we're ready to crochet the squares together. I'm going to show you how to do that, but before we do that, again, I just want to emphasize, take a photograph of the way you want your squares to be organized. I promise it's so easy to get them mixed up, and I actually did this on the last project that I worked like this a few years back. Okay, so I have them stacked in the order. This is the first from the left corner down. This is the first, and it's going vertically or up and down, and then the second one is going in the horizontal direction and then the next one vertically and then the next one horizontally and then the next one vertically okay so what we're going to do is you have to keep in mind as you do this which direction you know which square comes next and you know is it this way or is it this way in the presentation it matters a lot and if you get these a little bit mixed up it's going to be harder to reorganize later. Okay, so the first one is going to be here, and then the second one is going to be going side to side like this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold them corner to corner, to corner like this, okay? And let's go ahead and get rid of these others just temporarily. Okay. And I need to take care of a couple strands there. I will get to that shortly. Okay, let's go ahead and we're gonna start the neural stitch. We're gonna start by putting our hook into each corner. And I'm gonna make my slip knot in my yarn, like so. And I'm gonna join with the chain. Now this is all still in the chain two space. Okay, now let me go ahead and pull this in so the camera will focus better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a reverse single crochet. And the way we do this is we're going to go in through the top loops of that first stitch there. And we're going to go in on this other side 
through the top loops of the other square. So I want to show you that we are going through four loops. And we pull the loop up, yarn over, and pull through two. It's really a simple stitch, but it, it, it it's kind of mind-blowing because you're going in the opposite direction that you usually crochet. Let's do the next one into those two loops, and then the next two loops. So we're going through four loops again. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And do that again, if you're not sure. Two loops, two loops, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. Um, and when you work this stitch, don't try to manipulate the strands. The strands will fall exactly as you see here, as long as you're not trying to manipulate them and, and coax them in various ways. I think that's where more seasoned crocheters kind of get a little confused on this. I have taught this stitch to absolute, well, I would say confident beginners. I've taught this to confident beginners who had no trouble. And I have friends who've been crocheting for 40 years and who still just can't get this. And I think it's just because they've crocheted so long that it's just it's just kind of um, awkward and it goes against your muscle memory. I've done this stitch many times and I still, it's the slowest stitch that I do. I must slow way down. So into the two loops here and then the two loops of the other square, yarn over, pull through two. Now as you go along, um, just for the record, I am using the same crochet hook size I or 9 or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. If your stitches are way too loose on doing this stitch as you go across, by all means, go down to a smaller crochet hook and that should take care of the problem. And the reverse, if your stitches are too tight and they're pulling too hard on your work, feel free to bump it up a size. Always do with, you know, do what you need to do. So I'm just going to do this slowly, assuming that many of you may have never seen this before. Now, another thing, if you just absolutely can't do this stitch, you're not lost, I promise. Um, there are many other ways to to um, crochet these together. And I'll, I'll give a little sampling of that after I show you how to do the neural stitch. You can simply, I will just talk talk about them just briefly now. You can use the slip stitch. And this is just going from, you know, in the right direction from right to left. If you are a right-handed person or left to right as you normally would if you're a lefty. Um, another opportunity or, or option, I should say, is to just use your yarn needle and to sew them together with a whip stitch. You won't have any texture to speak of, but they will go together quite evenly and nicely just by using a simple whip stitch. Now some of you out there are, I know, very experienced crocheters and may have some other tricks up your sleeve. If you do, please tell me. I would love to learn from you um, and learn other ways to uh, put these squares together. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this all the way across and I will show you how to end at the corner. Okay, I've worked this all the way across the row, and now I'm going to do a reverse slip stitch. You stick the hook in the chain two corner and into that chain two corner. Pull the yarn through, don't wrap it, and then pull the yarn through, and I'm gonna give it a tug, and then a chain, and give it another tug. And I gave those two tugs, one after that slip stitch so that it's not you know, a bulging stitch there. And then I cut my yarn just like that, and let me show you how this looks. Isn't that pretty? And let me show you from this side. It's It's got a really nice raised texture, and I think it's worth going through the trouble to learn this if you can, because this is such a highly texturized project already, and this just adds like icing to the cake, I think. Now, one word I want to say about blocking, because I know some of you may think, oh, my squares, some of them aren't perfectly the same size or whatever. They have, uh, all the squares should be, you know, within within a half an inch or so. And I would not sweat the small stuff because what's going to happen as we crochet these together is the tension between the squares, since they all have the same number of stitches along all of the edges, just the natural tension and size of this is going to naturally stretch it where it needs to be stretched in places. You know, some squares are going to need a little more stretching than others, but Trust me on this for now, it will be fine because the weight of this blanket is going to make things even out in the end. 
Um, if there is any blocking that that is necessary, I would worry about that once they are sewn together. I, I have never, um, literally have never blocked squares like this before crocheting them together and there's never been a problem. So again, as long as you have the correct number of stitches along all the edges, you should be good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to add my next square. Let me go ahead and grab it. Okay, so here's the third square. And I'm going to be careful that, again, taking note that this is horizontal. So now this one is going to be vertical or up and down. And I'm just going to join, again, starting in the corner over here and then crocheting across. And... Um, I'm going to go ahead and complete my columns and then I will show you what I have. So now I have completed sewing these together into columns. You can see the neural stitching and just how, how nice and even that looks when you do that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these together. I'm going to join the columns and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, join in the chain two corners right here and then I'm going to join each column together and as I go across I'm also going to crochet into the chain two corner here and here on each side joining these these columns okay and then when you get to the last one here we work the reverse um, reverse slip stitch in the chain two corners at the end of the column. So go ahead and crochet the four strips or columns of your squares together and then I will show you what to do from there. All right now we have crocheted all of the squares together. I want to give you a view of what this looks like. And you notice that it is not perfect, but it is a lot closer than it was. I do have quite a few strands of the dark green to hide, which I will get to eventually. So now what we are going to do is we are going to put an edging along the side of the long edges with the five squares along the sides. And we're going to do a decorative edging both along the bottom and along the top edge of this and I will show you how to do that. Um, All right now I'm ready to work the edging and I'm going to just explain a couple things. You can use a different edging if you'd like but you do need something to kind of unify all of these squares. I am going to continue using the knurl stitch which is the same as the reverse single crochet because I think it's going to look probably the best after we have connected with you know all the squares with that stitch. So I'm going to connect my yarn in that chain two space and then I'm just going to begin in the next stitch with the knurl and I'm going to work this in each stitch along the side and I will show you how to do the chain two corners but like I explained when connecting do use the chain two corners as an additional stitch so I will show that to you once I get to that point. Oh, one other thing. I'm demonstrating it that I should mention. I am going through both loops of the of the um, stitch, not just the one that we have done in past uh, designs, but going through both loops of the stitch, covering them completely. And as you can see, that makes a lovely edging to a blanket. So I'll just go ahead and continue on until we get to the corners. So now that I've come to a join with another square, I'm going to work that knurl stitch in that chain two space of the blue corner and in the next one as well. I do have some strands there to hide. I'm going to hold that behind there and do it. See that? So I worked in this chain two space and in the next chain two space. And then I'm just going to continue all the way, all the way along. And when I get to the end, I'm going to work a reverse slip stitch, as I've demonstrated to you before, in that final chain two space of the fifth square. After I do that, I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to work the same on the other side. Do make sure that the front side is facing you as you work the neural stitch. So actually what I'm going to have to do is go start from the bottom 
square and work my way back up as I go along the other long edge. So go ahead and finish both of the long edges using the knurl stitch. Now it's time to put the finishing touches on the ends of our throw. And I just wanted to cast a vision for where we are headed with this. Okay, I'm gonna explain just quickly and then I'll demonstrate for you. Okay, we're gonna begin with another row of single crochet and we're gonna start that with the back side facing us. And then we're going to have a row after that with double crochet, chain one, and skipping a stitch. I'll show that to you. Then we're going to work two rows of the low front ridge, two rows of the cabling stitch or the cable stitch, and then two rows of the low front ridge, another row with the double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and skipping a stitch in between. And then we're going to have the shell with the pico and that will be the final row. So I just take a look at that. So it just helps me so much to know where we are headed before we begin the journey. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the finishing touches. Okay, to begin, we are going to find that chain two space right there. And like I said, we are working with the back side facing, and this is the part that's gonna have four squares across. This is the, I guess, the narrower end of the blanket. So now starting in the chain two space, and this would be the same place where the knurl was ended. I'm going to go ahead and join with a slip knot, or make our slip knot, and I'm going to join with the chain. And go ahead and single crochet in the same space and in each space or each single crochet and each chain two space and let me show you what I'm talking about when you get to the corner you'll have a chain two space here make sure you work a single crochet here and a single crochet in that next chain two space all the way across the end and you should have a total of 176 stitches across. All right, after working all those single crochets across, and let me just show you that I worked the last single crochet in the chain two of that last square across. So now we're going to work row number two of these finishing edges, or finishing touches, I should say. So we're gonna chain four, and this in the stitch count does count as a double crochet and a chain one. Okay, we're going to skip the first stitch, which is right here, and we're gonna work in the next stitch. We work a double crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, and then double crochet in the next stitch. We're gonna do this all the way across the row. So after working this all the way across, I'm going to work my last stitch. Let me skip a stitch and make that last stitch in that last single crochet. Okay, now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn this again. The back side is now facing us and we are going to work a single crochet in each stitch and then each chain one space, or I should say each double crochet and in each chain one space and we should still have 176 stitches at the end of this row. So go ahead and work those single crochets. Now for rows four and five, we're going to work rows one and two of the low front ridge. And we've done that on one of the squares, I believe. And let's go ahead and do a chain one. And we're going to skip that first stitch and then starting in the next stitch and working only in the front loop, as you recall, we're going to work slip stitches all the way across the row. At the end of the row, we're going to chain one and turn, and then we're going to work single crochets. Let me show you in the remaining loop of the stitch. So hopefully you can see that under the yarn is dark. Okay. So, Go ahead and work rows one and two of the low front ridge. If you need a little refresher on this stitch, if you've forgotten it already, look, look at the video description below and I'll have additional stitch videos on the low front ridge. So go ahead and work those two rows and then I'll show you what to do after that. Alrighty, for rows six and seven, 
we are going to work the cable stitch. I'm going to just show you a couple of these just as a refresher. We chain one at the beginning, single crochet in that first stitch, chain three, skip two stitches, and then single crochet in the next stitch, turn to work in the chain, and single crochet in each of those three chains, just working on one side of that V, and slip stitch in that single crochet, and I'm going to bring my yarn to the back, this just keeps from having to turn and turn and turn. You can turn the entire project, but the size that the blanket is right now is incredible. <laughs> it would be so much work to have to turn. So after we do that, we pull the cable back down and reveals those two stitches that we skipped. And then we're going to single crochet in each of those skipped stitches. Let me do that for you one more time because I know this is a tricky stitch. Chain three skip the next two stitches, single crochet in the next, and turn, and working in the chains, single crochet in each of those three chains, and now we're going to slip stitch in that single crochet, bring the yarn to the back side, and we can pull that cable down and see the two stitches that we skipped go ahead and work single crochets in each of those and remember now when you work row two I'm not going to demonstrate it but I will have a link below should you need additional stitch support when we work in the the remaining or, or actually work row two of the cable stitch remember we single crochet in the first stitch and then as you're working behind each of these cables we're going to work two single crochets and then one, two, and one. Just make sure that you have three single crochets behind each cable, again, plus the first stitch at the beginning. And don't forget to also add an additional stitch at the end of the row so that your stitch count will be accurate. All right, so go ahead and complete rows one and two of the cable stitch, which is rows, which are rows six and seven of the finishing touches. This is what you should have after completing seven rows of the edging. Now, the next three rows are as follows. We're going to repeat rows one and two of the low front ridge, which are the rows that were worked here. Go ahead and work row one and row two of the low front ridge, or LFR. And then we're going to repeat row two, which is the row worked with the double crochets um, we begin that again with the chain four and the chain three counts as a double crochet in this stitch count and then we skip the first stitch and then double crochet in the next stitch chain one skip the stitch double crochet in the next stitch etc repeat that afterwards so again we're going to be repeating the low front ridge rows one and two on this side of the cable and then repeat row number two once more after that I will work the final row with you now to begin the final row of the trim we're going to chain one we're going to single crochet and that first double crochet we're going to skip the next chain one space the double crochet and the next chain one space and then the next double crochet so let's just make it a little bit simpler double crochet here skip the next one and in the next double crochet we're going to work four treble crochets let's go ahead and work those one two three and four and then we're going to chain four one two three, four. We're going to slip stitch in the very first chain of that chain four, slip stitch, and then work four more treble crochets in the same place where we work the first four. So you're going to have a total of eight treble crochets worked in that double crochet space. 
and just do one more. All right. Now after we do that, we're gonna skip the next chain one space, double crochet and chain one space, and single crochet in the next double crochet. Or if you just wanna count the double crochets, we worked in this double crochet, skip the next one, single crochet in the next one, skip the next double crochet, and then we're going to make another shell with a pico in the next um, double crochet. So we're gonna work four treble crochets, that's three, and four, I'll just pause there, and then chain four, one, two, three, four, slip stitch in that first chain, slip stitch, and then four more treble crochets, one, two, three, and four. Skip the next double crochet and the next double crochet, work a single crochet. So let's go ahead. And this is what the back side looks like. And it is on purpose that I had the, the back side of these double crochets showing. I just think it gives it a much nicer quality looking at the back side of the stitches when we work these together like this. So go ahead and work this all the way across. Now, if you've added additional squares to your project from what I am recommending, it's not a problem at all, but just keep in mind that you may have to work um, some of these um, stitches at the end to make it come out right, because you may not have the exact number that I do, but that's okay. You can easily you know, work in between the chain one spaces if you need to, to kind of work in any extra stitches. Again, this is only if you are, um, you know, doing things just a little bit differently with a different number of squares. After working all the way across, we come to this chain four. Just go ahead and stick your hook in there and do a slip stitch instead of a single crochet. And this will just anchor this more securely, give it a chain and a tug, and go ahead and clip a nice yarn, a nice long piece of yarn there so that it will be easy to hide. And we have just completed the last stitch, everybody. This is so exciting for me. So now what you need to do is go ahead and hide all of those loose strands. And I'm gonna show you what I have. Well, I hope you enjoyed doing this project with me. This was really a delightful thing for me to do and just love exercising a little bit more creativity um, in doing so. I would absolutely love to see your finished or even in process photos. I am going to be putting together a showcase that will feature all of your work because I know many of you have so much creativity and I love to see your color choices and just to see the work of your hands. So if you want to participate with that, you can look at the video description where I have my email. My email is bonniebay at me.com and you can just send the photos. Again, when you send them, I'm assuming that I have permission to put them in the showcase. So um, I, I thank you in advance for those of you who are willing to do this. But um, I'm going to put them all together and hopefully before Christmas, I would like to have this showcase up so you can share with your friends uh, the work of your hands. Uh, and, and again, with me too, I just love, love, love seeing that. Um, one other thing, when you do send the pictures, do keep in mind that they are going to be on a public platform. So I don't mind if your name or if you have like an Etsy store or a business uh, name you wanna attach to the photo with a watermark, that's okay with me and I will be happy to share that in the video, but just keep in mind that it is a very public platform and um, if you want to protect your name and so forth, 
please feel free to just send the photo alone. Uh, again, it's, it's really up to you, whatever you'd like to do. But I'd so look forward to seeing these. Well, take care. God bless. Bye-bye.